Hello, this is Mahesh Ravi and in this video, we'll be looking at an easy workflow to work with Substance Painter and Cinema 4D. We'll be taking a look at how to create a model in Cinema 4D, how to UV unwrap it, how to take it to Substance Painter, how to texture it, paint it, export those textures back into Cinema 4D and then uh, do the final render in Cinema 4D, not using or not depending on any other plugins or third party renderers. Here we are in Cinema 4D and we are going to start modeling the character. I assume that most of you will be already familiar with the modeling techniques in Cinema 4D. Uh, so I'm going to go here and take a sphere. We have a sphere right here. Just go to display and I'm going to turn on the Gorad shading so that we can see the segments here. I'm going to increase this to um, 50. I think this is more than enough for our model. And uh, I'm going to create a box. Scale it down. Let's move it to the center of the scene. Okay. Yeah, I think this is good enough. We have this right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a boule. I'm going to add the cube and the sphere into the boule to get this um, basic shape. So this is where we will be, you know, this is our basic geometry where we will be building our pokeball. So we have this, let's make a cylinder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the coordinates of the cylinder and rotate it in 90 degrees. So we'll get it like this. This is good. And uh, let's go to the objects, reduce the radius a bit. So yeah, I think this is good enough. So um, I think this is enough for the radius. We have um, a cylinder right here. We basically want to use the cylinder to create another boule, another cut out or a, you know, um, a dent. In, in the sphere. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another boule. We already have one. We're going to create one more. So we're going to go here and create a boule. We are going to add the cylinder and the boule back in here. So we will create this then in here. So I think we have, we are sort of reaching there and, uh, but there is, there are a couple of things that we need to do. So I'm going to create another sphere. We need an inner sphere for this. I'm going to scale it down. And we are going to arrange the sphere sort of in the right position. Now what we are going to do is we are going to create one more, um, you know, two more cylinders to create a button in here. So let's go to um, the object panel and create a cylinder. Let's do the same thing, rotate the coordinates in 90 degrees. And we can uh, reduce the radius of this. Okay, uh, I think this is good. We can create a fillet as well. So let's go to caps. Let's turn on the fillet. We have it. Reduce the radius to maybe two. We need a, another a cylinder. So there are two buttons in here. So I'm going to create a hold alt and then drag it in the direction that we want to copy. I'm just going to go into the object and then reduce the radius a bit more here. So I think um, 15 is going to work pretty well. So what we're going to do is we can take all these uh, materials, uh, all the things we can, it's, it's a good idea to name all of this. So this is the first uh, sphere. We're going to call it the outer sphere, everything uh, in the name. So if any of this has a material tag, make sure that you delete that. And once everything is done, we can actually go to the layout here and change it to BP UV edit, select that. So we can see uh, a window where how our UV is going to look like. We can actually go to the paint setup wizard, make sure that every model, every object is selected. Click on next, uncheck single material mode. We don't want everything to be wrapped into one single material. So we're going to just uh, uncheck this and click next. Uh, these are the channels which are there, but right now there is only color information, which is fine. Uh, we can uh, select these elements what we want. So I'm going to select a reflectance channel. I'm going to select a bump and I'm also going to select the normal channel. These might be the channels that we might have to create in uh, Substance Painter. So I'm just going to check that. I'm going to click finish and uh, close this. Unwrapping is done. Now what we are going to do is we are going to export. So we can switch back to the initial layout. Uh, we can go back to startup layout. We are going to select 
all these materials, uh, all the objects, select everything. We are going to go to file, click export and select FBX. We are going to export this as an FBX file. So we have this set. We can choose it uh, as desktop. I'm going to name it Pokeball and click save. Click OK and saved. Now what we are going to do is we are going to open Substance Painter and work on the model. So let's go into Substance Painter right now. So um, here we are in Substance Painter. We can see the, the shelf right here with a lot of uh, materials, brushes and things like that. We have a toolbar and we have the layer palette and the properties tab right here. And this is your workspace. We need to first import our model that we created in Cinema 4D. For that, we're going to go to File and click on New. And in New, you can choose a format which actually suits to it. I'm going to go with um, Adobe Dimension, which is, you know, good enough. And we are going to select the model. So we have the Pokeball FBX, open that. We have, um, you know, the document resolution. You can scale it up to 2K if you want. So let's just make it 2K and click OK and it's going to bring the model into the scene. So we have it right here. So the interface actually works, the navigation works the same. You can click on Alt on your keyboard and you can use your mouse to um, you know, play around with the view, uh, panning and zooming in and zooming out of the model, right? So we have the model here, there is no data here. Right now uh, we can see that there is no color data or paint on this. So on your right, um, you know, aside of the interface, you can see all the objects that we had. We have the sphere, we have the inner sphere, we have the cylinders, and we have the cube that we used to cut this boolean. So all of those elements are here and everything, when you select a particular layer or an object, the layer of that particular object is highlighted and you can work on this particular layer, right? So um, by default, there is an empty layer here. You can start painting right away or you can create additional layers from here. So to, to create a base, right, we, we are going to build a base, um, you know, texture on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, the materials, I'm going to go down and we have um, a steel rough texture. I'm just going to add it here. So I'm just going to drag and drop it right here. So you can immediately see the steel rough appearing here and also that material is applied to our outer sphere, just on the outer sphere, that texture is already applied, which is pretty good. So now we have that layer right here. You can build, that's that's a pretty decent, uh, you know, um, starting point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new fill layer. So click on this fill layer and it creates a fill layer right here. And in this fill layer, you can add colors, so basic colors and all that you can, you can play around with it and you can add it. So um, I'm going to add um, a base color, which is, uh, let's say, work with the red. So we wanted a red color as the base of it. And we have this. Now what we want to add is we want to add an additional layer in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a um, new material onto this. So let's go to um, perhaps smart materials. And let's take a look at um, so damage texture, let's take a damaged texture, Ste maybe a steel scratch layer also on top of it. We can see uh, there is a scratch layer which is created right now. And you can again add the fill layer on top of it. So as we add more and more layers, you can see that all those effects are applied into this uh, material. All the layers are showing up right here. Right, so this is how you basically work with, this is your starting point, just giving you an overview of how to get started with this. Um, now this is for one layer, we have done that. You can you can start brushing also on these uh, layers. So I can create a uh, layer. And what I want to do is, I want to convert the base of this to white. I want to just paint the base to white. So to do that, I'm going to select the brush tool, which we already have. We have the color set to white. I'm gonna increase the brush size by using the square brackets, and I can paint on that sphere. So this is 3D paint. So you can just paint only on that uh, base. So 
So once you have done that base paint, right, there is there are a couple of other things that you can do uh, with the brush tool. For instance, so let's say I'm what I want to do is I want to create um, you know uh, a not just a paint layer. I want to include you know increase the height of this. I want to create a dent in here or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I can go to brushes and I can choose any brush texture in here. So what I'm going to do is in the new uh, layer, I'm going to create a new layer on top of this. And in here, I'm going to go down and I'm going to say that I don't need color. I don't need um, roughness. I don't need metallic. I just want to affect the height of this texture. So you can go down to the height. You can increase the value. And then if I paint on it, you can see that the height is getting affected here. So there is creating a, a little bit of texture and also there is a height information there. If you reduce the value of height, it's going to create a, an inversion. So it will create a dent in the shape of that. Uh, right? So it will be like this, like scratches created. So you can see the difference here. This is sort of an inverted um, you know, dent and this is a projection which is happening. So that is based on the height value that you are giving right so you can turn off the value so this is right now we have turned on the height and normal you can also do this for um, you know roughness here so if I am choosing a different brush and if I'm only affecting the roughness of this material so it will become less reflective here so if I um, do this it's going to make the that particular area less uh, reflective, right? Um, so similarly, I can I can select just metallic value of this. I can increase the metallic value of this uh, thing, and if I paint it, it is going to be more glossier and more metallic in this area. So this is how you basically work with brushes, right? So you can keep adding elements into this. You can drag and drop materials into this and just modify it. So if I'm going to just quickly create materials here, I'm just gonna add these to these shapes, just drag and drop it. And we have a basic uh, you know, set of materials. Now, the important point that we need to understand is how to, how to export this uh, you know, element, we, how to export these textures into Cinema 4D and render it without having a third party renderer. To process this the workflow is pretty easy what we need to do is once you're happy with your um, you know the model and the textures what you can do is you can go to file and click on export textures and it's going to show up this window you can choose output template as adobe dimension and you can click export here and all the textures which are used or which we created right now will be exported uh, into your system now once this is done you can quit substance painter and you can go to Cinema 4D back again. Okay, so we are back in Cinema 4D uh, with the model that we have already created. Now we need to import the textures that we made in some Substance Painter to this and assign it to these models. So um, this is how you do it. Since, you know, as we already unwrapped the whole model, the texture tag for each one of this is actually here. We need to actually take this, we need to take all these uh, material slots and assign it with the materials that we created from Substance Painter. So I'm going to go into the sphere. Let's open that up. Let's turn off the lines so that we can see it a little clearer. So we're going to go in here and we are going to turn on the color, right? And we are going to choose the texture for sphere. And we're going to choose the diffuse uh, material into the color channel. Say no. And we can see uh, the material is already here. We can see that it's, it's already working. Now, um, it's not complete. We have a lot, a lot of other parameters that we need to add. So we're going to go to the reflectance. And if you have a default specular in the reflectance channel, just remove it. And we will be adding this from the scratch. So I'm going to go in to add and add a GGX um, channel right here. So it's going to create a highly reflective material here. What we're going to do right now is we're going to go to the roughness channel and in the texture of the roughness channel, we are going to add a colorizer. So we will click on the colorizer and a colorizer is added to the roughness channel. We will click on the colorizer map 
and loading our glossiness map into it. So sphere glossiness, open this up and it's going to load right here. Now it's showing in red because of this gradient right here. We can just go ahead and change these gradients into pure white. So make sure that you're changing the gradient into white. Just use black and white. So I have a variation like this and this is good enough. We're going back to the reflectance. We'll go to the layer color here. Let's load the texture of specular right into this and we have that as well. So now you can see, uh, you know, the the material working slightly better in here, right? We have um, the reflection happening, we have the patches and everything, and it's looking pretty good. Now, it's not done. We have a couple of other maps to add. We're gonna go to the bump, we're gonna turn on the bump and add the texture of height into the bump channel. So bump is added into it. We also have the normal map. So go to the normal and load the normal map of the sphere into this channel. And we can now start to see a little more depth in here. So if we just turn around and we look closer, we can see there is the height information and also uh, the bump value, which is here in the model. So uh, our sphere, the top part of sphere, a sphere is textured and we need to now repeat the same process for the rest of the textures uh, right here. So we're going to do that. Right, so we have uh, the material done, right? We have uh, all the textures applied from Substance Painter here. So to see if this is working properly, we might have to render this out and see it. So to do that, I'm going to add a uh, floor. So let's move the entire model up and align it to the floor. So we have that here. We can bring in a skylight. So I'm gonna go in and create a sky. I am going to um, add a new material for the HDRI and I'm gonna turn off the color and reflectance, turn on the luminance value and load an HDRI map into this. So we have an HDRI right here. I'm gonna open that up and we have that right here. Just add it to the sky. The entire scene is lit by um, from the HDRI map. We have that here. I'm also going to use a material for the ground. So we have that as well. Let's play. Right. And uh, we'll go to the render settings and add an ambient occlusion and also a global illumination. And we can give it a render to see how it is looking right now. It looks pretty good. So, you know, this is a very simple tutorial on how to get started with Substance Painter and if you already have a model, how to texture that in uh, Cinema 4D. So, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. I will see you soon with another video. Till then, bye.